Hey guys, it's Jonathan. So I have a whole bunch of reasons of why I think Uber is gonna trade higher. So let me get into them. In front of you is our unusual optioned activity scanner. So on our scanner, Uber, Uber, every single day, for the last 10 days, Uber has found its way, I guess the sixth tier of August, it didn't hit the list. Here we go, Uber and then Uber and Uber. As well, we see Uber here. So that's the first thing that got my attention. Big believer where there's smoke, there's fire. Follow the smart money. So the next thing that I wanted to do is I wanted to look at how the volatility is priced in the market. And if I look at Uber here, I'm looking at a daily, oh, going back one year. And all this is, is the straddle. It's the expected move. Does Uber have a habit of staying within its expected move? Or does Uber constantly break out of its expected move? Which would then say market makers aren't so good at valuing the stock because every single time that they make a market, it outperforms. So they're wrong. So what happens is market makers make markets like this as the expected move, they get their butt whooped, so then volatility rises because there's bigger expected moves after a name like this trounces the market makers. What's interesting to me is over the past year, Uber has actually closed inside its expected move 75% of the time. So what does that mean? Well, to summarize, those who sell straddles would make money an estimate 75% of the time. Those who buy straddles make money 25% of the time. Those who buy options make money 25% of the time. Those who sell make 75% of the time in Uber. And that's just an estimate. But to me, I kind of feel like the options market prices Uber pretty well. Like if it was 50%, I would think the options market is horrible at pricing Uber. But if you look at something like, like the most liquid stuff, like SPY, it's very, very difficult to buy options at SPY. 91.67% for the last year. So overall, Uber coming up on the unusual, on the Wall Street wiretap with more than any other name, pretty much. So that's the smoke, where we want to start looking deeper into the name. The next thing I do is look at the volatility, see how it's priced. Then, this is what we call our high value target tool. And let me put this on a daily for three years. Okay. Three years probably gets every bit of Uber, right? Since it's IPO. So how this works is this line here is just a 21 day moving average of historical volatility. We wanna see how Uber is priced relative to its vol. So 21 historical vol, and this is a three standard deviation band and a four standard deviation band. What we're looking for is when Uber trades outside of its band, closes outside and then closes inside, you're gonna get a buy signal. Same thing on the sell side. It closes outside the three, then closes back inside. You get a sell signal. It's like forced discipline. It keeps you on the edges. What's really interesting to me, and this is something that you see sometimes, not too often, but when you do, you kind of want to jump on it. The weekly. Now, unfortunately, we can only get so much data because Uber is not that old of a company. But if we put it on a weekly and then this becomes the 21 day or 21 week moving average, right? Three standard deviations, four standard deviations, three, four, still that forced discipline. There's only been one buy ever on Uber. At 25, and it looks like it took you all the way up to 40 before the high value target tool would have helped you out and given you two sell signals to get your butt out of there. So buy signal, that's a really strong signal. 
So the high value target buy signal. Our vol visualizer here. I think options price Uber well. I think it's fair to, I mean, they just do. Okay. We had the wiretapper. Uber all over the wiretapper. Let's put it like this. Scroll down just how heavily Uber has been hitting the wiretapper all recently. I have two more things, two more reasons that I want to look at. I spent a lot of time on Uber today. I spent a lot of time because when we put money at risk, this isn't really a short-term trade. If I take you back to this high value target tool we were just talking about, people talk about being day traders, swing traders, find a place to get into a trade and we stay into the trade until it works or until we lose too much money and stop ourselves out. But for this to work, we're talking, you know, we want movement 55, but it could take some time. You see how Uber moves. I don't know. I mean, what, what's the rhythm of this stock, right? Is it like this? Even if it's like this, this still takes us out to September. So I encourage patience. So here's what I do next. I look at everything relative value. Uber, Lyft, oil companies, gold companies, solar companies, car companies. You have to analyze different companies against their competitors. Uber and Lyft, a company is going to win, but it's not going to be one and then the other is going to go out of business. I would say 70% or 65% of the move of Uber and Lyft are because of the car share industry and has nothing to do with their individual companies. With that being said, 25, 30% does. That's what separates them. So what I like to do is we've already gone and looked at Uber. I know that I want to buy Uber, but what I really want to see, and I'll use this time period right here, we're looking to buy Uber, right? This is the process. But if we're looking to buy Uber right here, perhaps buying Lyft is the better option because we want to buy Uber. We're bullish Uber, but because Lyft is inexpensive to Uber, we get better bang for our buck getting long Lyft. So that's why we look for correlations. You can see that would have Traders can profitably trade one against the other if they wanted to. But what I see over the time period since Uber's IPO is they're the same relative. They're the same percent. Not one is cheaper than the other, just relative value terms. So I don't want to buy a Lyft. I can stick with Uber. I have one more thing that I want to show you that I read through, I found it very valuable, and I just want to share. In the video description, I'll leave a link to this page as well. I don't know this person, but I really, really liked his analysis on Uber earnings. And it actually turns out that he was head of business operations at Uber Eats Canada. But nevertheless, I'll put this down below. I'm following him. Follow him. Awesome work. Uber Eats takes New York's leadership. Wow, Uber Eats is getting massive, but a really, really great thorough analysis of Uber earnings that I'll leave for you below. Let's talk trade though, right? How can we make some money? I love the unusual option activity. There's definitely some really big players in this name, most likely fading, expecting a bigger move. When I say fading, fading means as Uber goes lower, we're buying. So if we look at the options, now again, we can't be in August, there's only eight days. September is not enough either. I would really encourage you to look at October, November, or even December. Options are priced based upon time. Uber is trading 42.70. If you wanted to buy a 10 lot of these 50 strike for 70 cents, just think like you're long 1,000 shares from 50 you paid $700 to get long 1,000 shares from 50. 
if the stock is under 50, 64 days from now, you lose your principal, you'll lose your $700, but you can never lose a dollar more. Now, if we go out further, twice the price. Why are these twice the price, but the time period is only one third longer? It probably is because it includes earnings. You're probably getting earnings with this expiration cycle versus this one. So here we go. Let's talk about something actionable. We built the wiretapper to find names that have the highest probability of outperforming their implied volatility. The intention of the tool is to find names that are going to move. I like the long side because of that high value target tool. What surprises me is this, going back to last year, staying inside 75%. I guess with volatility coming in, going lower in the past year, that would encourage short volatility holders to, to win. So I'm sure that factored into it as well. But I like the long side, guys. I, li I like buying options. I just do. Um, man, I almost want to go out to November to give it a little bit more time. I like these 50s. But what I also like is I like some of this extra stuff. Now this is the probabilities are low. Use Delta, 9% probability for Uber to be trading over 60 in 99 days. That's how you can look at that. But the real trade I like, 52 halves, yeah, 50s. I want a little bit of Delta, 27, maybe even 30 Delta, something like that. I don't mind buying these. Buying these, you buy 10 of them, $1,400, you can never lose more. If you buy 10 of these, think of it like you're long 1,000 shares from 50. And you have the privilege to be long for 99 days from 50, or you have the option. If it's under 50, your clearing firm or your brokerage will know that you don't want to exercise your option and they'll automatically just go to zero. You can never, never lose more if you buy these options. That's what I like. Follow along, paper trade. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Subscribe, give it a thumbs up. My name is Jonathan Rose, owner, Masters in Trading.